about an experience that dates back a number of years and is actually part of my experiences in my very first trip to the Peruvian Amazon. I'd been drinking ayahuasca uh, in Brazil for a couple of years and met someone who uh, agreed to facilitate a meeting with an Ashaninka shaman deep in the jungle in the Peruvian Amazon. And I was feeling drawn and called to go. And so I got this uh, recommendation and this referral. And, and these were days before the internet as we know it and before Google and before you could find out the kind of information that you can now about ayahuasca and plant medicine. So for me, it was a, a pretty big leap of faith to, to get on that plane. <clears throat> and it was a long journey in many respects. And I arrived in Pucallpa, and even from Pucallpa, it was a long journey. It was uh, two hours on a bumpy dirt road to a small little port where we waited for a really long time for a little motorized uh, canoe to come along, after which we were on that for about an hour, and then from there hiked into the forest for another hour and a half. And after this long journey, I got to the top of the hill overlooking this encampment, and it was, I, I had been transported to this world of my visions and of my dreams and things that I had seen in other ayahuasca ceremonies, and even a vision that it dated back to when I was a small child and thought, I just want to run away and live in the jungle. Uh, and as a small child, I was living in the inner city of North Philly. So where this came from, I don't know, but talk about synchronicity. And it was in that, that moment that I felt, wow, I've, I've really arrived. This is really it. And it was pristine and it was beautiful. And the valley opened to this flowing, beautiful, steaming hot river with vapor rising and beautiful outbuildings with thatched palm leaf roofs and palm leaves that were 50 feet long. It, 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 I, it was idyllic to me. And I can say that I came to this place in the jungle with real curiosity and an openness and an open mind. And what I was to learn that not long after is that I also came uh, with a bit of idealism and romanticism about what this would be. So after settling in that first night, the next day I woke up and I'm feeling okay, this is it, I'm in the jungle. Well, little did I know, I really was in the jungle. I looked down and all over my torso are these red eruptions. And they itch. And I think, oh, well, maybe I got bit by something. And they start to scratch. And they start to spread. And they spread. And they multiply. And they spread some more. And then they start traveling down my thighs. And I'm thinking, oh, I have chicken pox. I've never had chicken pox before. I must have chicken pox. And I'm thinking, oh my god, I'm in the middle of the jungle and I have chicken pox. So I thought, oh, I need to tell somebody about this. But there was a little bit of a difficulty there because I went, on the recommendation of my friend, with the immersion method. I knew hola was the extent of my Spanish. And nobody there spoke English. Like, literally, I was the only gringa. And the Spanish they did speak was uh, not even the Spanish you would hear in the city. I couldn't even catch a familiar word because the shaman was Ashaninka, and so they spoke this kind of jungle Ashaninka uh, Spanish. So I'm thinking, I have the chicken pox. Well, it turns out that I learned pretty quickly that it was not the chicken pox, but it was what they call isengo, which is their word for chiggers. So, so here I am, day one, and I'm like, oh, this really is the jungle. Like, and so I have chiggers, and they start to progress, and they progress from my torso up to my face, around my neck, down my back, down my legs, to the tips of my toes, and they itch, and they itch, and they itch, and the itch never subsides. In fact, the itch never subsided the entire time I was there. So that night is the first ceremonial night, and I come to the ceremony, and I know that ayahuasca tends, and did in me, to amplify the effects of whatever you're experiencing. <laughs> So I'm thinking, oh, okay, so like this really is the jungle. I got the chiggers, I got the outhouse with the tarantulas hanging from the eaves of the outhouse. 
there's a meager food supply, I am a day away from the nearest town where there maybe would be some relief. I can't communicate with anybody. All I can do is like point and scratch. And by this time, within 24 hours, I'm, literally my legs are a bloody mess. And I'm, I'm, I'm in my room taking pictures. I'm like, no one's going to believe this. And I'm taking pictures of my leg and, because I just I can't believe like, that my body looks like this. And apart from all of the, the body image issues and you know, I'm thinking about Dream and her, in, you know, in her puke and I'm sitting here like scratching and I'm bloody and I'm a mess and I, I'm afraid to go to the bathroom because of the tarantulas, but I'm in the jungle and that's what I wanted. I wanted to be in the jungle and interestingly enough, I got what I asked for. So I proceeded to drink ayahuasca that night and sure enough, the effects of the ayahuasca amplified the effects of the chiggers that were all over my body and causing me to itch like crazy. And I was pretty miserable. And the misery was punctuated by intermittent visions of crystalline palaces and plants growing from my navel and the sound of the rushing river and the beautiful icaros and the, and the tobacco sopladas. But nonetheless, I'd come back to that misery. And so on the fourth ceremonial night, it was about 10 days in, and I was about halfway through my stay there, I thought, okay, I cannot do this anymore. I just, I just can't. And so I thought, tonight is it. Tonight will be my last ceremony. Tomorrow I'll go back to town. Maybe I'll get some, by this time I heard, El Camfor, that will help. That'll take away the itch. I'll get some El Camfor, which I didn't even know what it was then. And maybe in a couple of days I can come back. So I come to the ceremony and I'm thinking, this could be my last ceremony. And not only am I thinking, this could be my last ceremony here, I'm thinking, this could be my last ceremony ever. Like, this is just way too much. This is way too much misery. And so that night, knowing that it might be my last ceremony ever, I drink quite a bit of ayahuasca. And as the effects are coming on, I'm bracing myself for the effects of the itching and the bloody legs and the discomfort to, to, to amplify. And yeah, it did. It came just as I had expected. And the difference was this night, it amplified and it mirrored that misery in my mind and in my heart and in my soul and in the very core of my being. And I thought, what is this? And it caused me to pay attention because it had moved beyond just my body. It had moved into the fabric of my being. And somehow, somehow, and I believe it was the grace and the intelligence uh, and the love of the universe coming through the plants that created the smallest opening. And in that opening, what I saw and what I realized was that the work was to find the comfort in the discomfort. And I sat with that for a while. And I realized that my whole life, my whole life, I had been seeking comfort and solace. And I had done it through drugs, starting at the age of 12, through alcohol, through a variety of self-abusive practices. And then later, then later through yoga and pursuing spiritual paths. And what I realized that everything that I pursued in seeking solace and seeking comfort was outside myself. It was something I was thinking that I thought was out there. And in that moment, that moment, like crystallized everything that my life had been about in terms of trying to find comfort, trying to make peace with myself. And I thought, wow, how about that? I come to the Amazon, to the jungle, and have these insects, these, these Insects you can't even see bore under my skin and create this incredible discomfort as a method for me to get that everything, that everything I had been looking for wasn't out there. It was all in here. And I can't say that the itch got any easier or that it went away and some miracle happened and the sky opened up and some beautiful soothing rain came and the rash disappeared. That didn't happen. <laughs> didn't happen. But what happened was I sat with that discomfort. I sat with that discomfort moment by moment and I actually did find the comfort in discomfort. And I had a really powerful take home message and that message was acceptance and love and being 
drawn and inspired to be with what is at any given moment. And it was really interesting because from that, like so many things opened up. I thought, oh my goodness. I thought about my clients. They're sitting on death row facing their mortality every day. They're not choosing to go to the jungle to drink ayahuasca to have a death experience. They're actually sitting there, right, with the government of the United States of America wanting to kill them every single day. Like, that's, that's their life. And I, I, the, the connections that came from that moment, from those chiggers who I, to whom I am eternally grateful, <laughs> have been so profound that it is a story I still tell. It's a story I'm telling here tonight when I could tell stories about the crystalline palaces and the plants emerging out of my belly button and all of the wonderful people that I've met and all of the beautiful places that I've been. But it's that story of acceptance and that story of the potential for these plants and this intelligence and this medicine to heal us individually, collectively, globally that has meaning for me and is the story I came to share with you tonight. Thank you.